Lord God, we come together on this day because we need you. We need one another. We need to hear your word. Grant that if we hear it here, we may be so possessed by it that we become servants of it out in your world. Amen. And please, friends. I think some of you know me. My name is Tom Scott. I am the retired rector of St. Paul's in Muskegon. I now live in Evanston, Illinois, and do contract work for the Diocese of Chicago mainly, and I'm a priest on the staff at Church of the Atonement there, and I'm also attached to St. John's, blessedly, here in Grand Haven, because I need a church home in the Diocese of Western Michigan, and your rector has kindly allowed me to be affiliated with you, and I am always blessed when I come to celebrate here, and it's not nearly often enough. Speaking of things that are not nearly enough, most days when I'm with my wife, for example, watching the news, she particularly likes to watch Lester Holt in the evening, I find myself saying more often than not, sweet Jesus, in the morning, what are we going to do? <laughs> you can tell where I come from originally. Because I feel like I haven't got enough wherewithal to deal with the stuff that's out there. I don't have enough wherewithal to deal with the stuff that's in me half the time. And I have an extended family. And they feel all this too. You know as well as I, I need not run down the laundry list of things that bother us deeply as they should. And which leave us confused and angry and hurt and wondering what on earth we can do so that we have that kind of anxious frustration that actually sort of sucks out our own energy. We feel that far too often. At least I do. I don't mean to put thoughts and words with you, but I have talked with enough of you in the last little while to get the sense that this is not an unfamiliar feeling to you. So I began to think for today, what can I say? What can I do in my work as a witness of the church as well as a celebrant for this congregation to help us try to find a way to cope, to do not simply the work of hanging on, but getting out there and doing our part. As I began to think about it, I turned, as I often do, to the baptismal covenant. You will remember from the many times you have offered it here that there is that closing petition, will you do all in your power to see to it that everyone's dignity and place in this world is granted and that there is justice and peace among people? Will you do your part? And that's the nub place for me. What's my part? What can this broken down old war horse do these days? So as I began to think and to reflect on that insistent question in the baptismal covenant, I came up with a way to look at things that I hope is helpful for you as you go on from today, whether it's to observe Father's Day, or to remember your own fathers, or to commemorate Juneteenth, to do all of the work that's around that, to simply open yourself to the world that we are in, to find a way to respond to all the things that are there. And this is what I came up with. For me, it begins if I'm to have any hope at all of seeing my way forward, with gratitude. I have been brought to this place 
We have been brought to this place in our lives by the continuing presence of God. Yes, we've had our part and we've sometimes rode our way off to the side of the channel we were supposed to be in. Things have happened to us because the world is not always our friend. People have done bad things. We have suffered at their hands. We have done less or worse than we might. We know all of this, but nonetheless, upon reflection, we can be grateful. I am here now. And in that act of gratitude, I find that I begin to slow down inside. I begin to be willing to sort of put aside that desperate sense of sweet Jesus in the morning, what am I going to do? And say, Jesus, here I am. And thank you for being here with me. Thank you. So gratitude for the blessings I have received, for the things that I have endured, for the work I've been able to do, and for the witness I've been able to make, thank you. Imperfect as it is, thank you. Because it's not your fault that I'm imperfect. So gratitude slows me down and centers me a bit. And that's crucial, I think, for being able to see one's way forward in a hard time. The second thing that gratitude does is my second point. It gives me a place in which to stand so that I can begin to remember. I can remember the times and the places and the circumstances in which God has been at work that I've seen. Not necessarily in me. I'm certainly not the center of the universe, but I can see that it happens in the wide world. And I'm grateful for that, and I remember it. And the strength I draw from that is in the form of encouragement to think that it'll keep on happening. God has not bailed out on the world. I had a seminary professor who used to say, you know, God loves you just the way you are, and too much to leave you that way. <laughs> God's going to call you onward. You're going to be led, guided, encouraged. You're going to discover for yourself by the grace of the Spirit that there are things you want to do, ways you want to live and act that express who you are and enlarge your sense of participation in life and in the lives of others. And that is a good thing. So I remember those moments. I'm grateful and I'm full of memory. I come then to say, Lord, what am I supposed to see and know and do here? And so I go about the exercise of trying to observe, to notice what's going on around me, what's going on in the world at large, what am I blowing past in the course of a day because I'm much too absorbed with other stuff that I could and would actually like to observe. Help me, Lord, in this time that you have granted me the opportunity to slow down and to remember, to now look out, and to look out with as few blinders or sets of prejudices as possible and simply see what's going on. To be able to see the world as it is going on is a great gift and not one that I at least am able to lay hold of very easily, very often. I have to go through that almost mechanical exercise to get to the place where I can start to see things as they are, not as I would have them be, want them to be, try to make them be, even blind myself to so that I don't have to see what there is to see. Because I do that too. So when I begin to observe, I also then can come to the place where I'm willing to make my pledge, which is, Lord, give me the work to do so that I can be a blessing to somebody, somebody's 
today. Give me my work to do. You've helped me see. Now help me be sent. Give me the work to do. I want to do that work because I'm grateful. Because I remember all the things for which I am grateful. Because I've seen the way the world is and I don't want to be on the sidelines. Nor do I want to be simply caught up in my own affairs. I don't want to simply see things in terms of how I'm going to get along. I want to see how I can be part of the world you have made and are calling into being, sometimes even in spite of me. But Lord, make it possible for me now to be part of that in the way that helps, in the way that encourages other people to do the same thing. So that's what I brought you here today. I brought you from my work in the Diocese of Chicago, my service in the Church of the Atonement and in St. John's Naperville, where I am also assigned, so that you can see what at least one person is doing and look at it and not judge it, I trust, so much as say, he has a methodology and maybe there's a thing there for me. To be grateful, to remember, to observe, to make the commitment to work, to grow in the Spirit. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.